Malawi is a beautiful country with beautiful hills and beautiful rivers, with plenty of water enough to produce power for the country's need. Lucky enough, all these rivers are widely spread across Malawi. But according to statistics, it shows that Malawi has got a population of around 17 million people. But 8% of the people have got access to power from the national grid. And only 1% comes from the rural people. It is very difficult for the government or organizations to get power from the national grid to supply to the rural areas because rural areas are located far away from the national grid and that uh, most communities are scattered. Therefore, if nothing is done, it can take maybe more than 20 years before the rural communities get power, enough power for industrial purposes, like for agro-processing, for water pumping, for grinding mills, and so many other things. But I have an idea on how maybe 10 million people from the rural areas of Malawi can have access to cheap and sustainable electricity for agro-processing, for irrigation, and for income generation activities. And today, as I, stand, as I stand here on the stage, I would like to share with you my personal story, how I designed my own hydropower plants and how they are impacting the rural areas of Malawi. This started by the time I was eight years old, when I built a small toy and I placed a small uh, bicycle dynamo in that one. As I was growing, praying with my system, when I got 14 years, it was the time that I had prayed with a number of different bicycle dynamos, dissecting them, understanding the principles of operation. My, my love for electricity grew and then I wanted to light my house. But at the same time, I wanted something that could continuously keep on turning a bicycle dynamo. Remembering one of my lessons in class, then I thought of hydropower. It quickly, I took my uh, bicycle dynamo, fixed a small turbine, and took it to the stream about, 100, uh, about 150 meters away from my home. I connected some two wires from there to my home. I simply pressed it on a head of two meters. Lucky enough, it was able to produce the power that I wanted. And I was able to light my house, my room actually, with a small radio. My passion for electricity grew. I wanted to get more power to power a video set so that I start a, a video showing business in my village. I went from one scrapyard to another scrapyard looking for some scrap meadows as I was doing my experiments. I remember another day in 1999, I was riding a coach from Zuzu to Karonga. Then I saw a video, uh, a colored video set being played in the coach from 12 volt system with the help of an inverter. I realized that my project is possible. In the year 2000, I met another prominent business person from my village. His name is Mr. Sain Kaunda, and he's the proprietor of Mwenera Transport. Upon hearing my idea, he invited me to his workshop. We had a conversation, and then he was convinced with me, and then he said, I'm ready to support you. He said, Hastings, now I'll give you access to my scrapyard, Pick any type of stuff that you would want to get from here for your experiments. And lucky enough, he also gave me a, a car alternator, a battery, and then some other piping that I use for my project. When I took all this stuff to my stream, and then lucky enough, it worked very, very well. I was able to get more power as I wanted to power a video set at my home, of course using the inverter. I was very happy because that time I was making cool money. It was nice business. 
Many people were coming to the, uh, many people were coming to my place to watch the video films. And at the same time, villagers from the trading center were coming with their batteries to have them charged. And all the phones from the village, I was charging them. It was nice for me. <laughs> but then, many people from the village were also interested in this uh, technology, and they wanted me to uh, install uh, into their homes. But the fact that the system was expensive to install, it was difficult for me to do that, because the rural communities, it meant they, uh, they wanted an alternator, they wanted a car battery, and they wanted an inverter, plus some other accessories. So it poses a, a great problem for me to go ahead with this. Then quickly something came into me, then I thought of this same small bicycle dynamo. I thought that uh, if maybe I can design something replicating the same principle of a bicycle dynamo, maybe I can get a better generator. Then quickly I organized some scrapped magnets, putting them together, strengthening the magnetism on the rotor. I organized my own stator and then I pressed more windings around that one. And then I took it to the stream. Lucky enough, instead of getting 12 volts, I ended up getting 33 volts. <laughs> that was very great for me. It was a great moment. And that was, that was my eureka moment because I had found it. I had discovered the problem that was there in my work. And then immediately I started conducting my uh, experiments because I had realized that uh, simply by strengthening the magnetism on the rotor, increasing the windings, and increasing the speed of the rotor, and then I was able to get more power. My experiments went on, on, and on. Up to the extent that uh, I had to realize uh, 230 volts, 240 volts, 270 volts with the power up to, up to, output up to 1,000 watts. And then this was very good. When I took my system, I repressed this one, the alternator system. I repressed uh, with uh, my own homemade generator. And then it was power coming from the same unit. No alternator, no battery, no inverter. Getting from my own homemade generator, getting cool 230 volts, 1,000 watts. For the video, for battery charging, and then for the phones charging, including lighting, barber shops, saloons, and then this was very great for me. From that, because the, in, because, uh, the communities were very much interested, and then I had found what the community wanted, and then I went now along installing these things in the communities around. To date, I have installed more than 100 small-scale power plants, and impacting directly more than 3,000 people. Because of this, I received uh, many awards, national and uh, international. That was from 2004 up to somewhere 2013. And then in 2014, I had a chance because I was selected to participate in the Mandela Washington Fellowship for Young African Readers in the US. During the event, I was also one of those who were recognized by President Barack Obama of the United States. <laughs> also from the same event, I received a grant from United States African Development Foundation so that I set up my workshop when I come back home. So when I came back home, I had to set up my workshop. I procured um, some workshop equipment, and then I had to train 100 young people in hydropower fabrication and maintenance. I created my enterprise and I, I gave it a name. I call it Turbines Energy. And then at the moment, Turbines Energy in the, is in the process of installing a 100 kilowatt power plant 
with the support from U.S. Embassy in Malawi uh, through the 2014 yearly grant. Because this one is a, a bigger project, and I'm doing this one in phases. The first phase is a, a 30 kilowatt power plant, and it's expected to be commissioned this August 2016. But upon completion of the uh, entire 100 kilowatt power plant, I expect to impact more than 5,000 people in my community where people will be pumping water, where people will be doing agro-processing, and then where people will be grinding maize right away in the village. And this one is the end of my story. Because of this, I have this strong feeling that if we join hands as Malawians, if the government comes in in full force, if non-governmental organizations come in, if investors come in, I have the belief that it's possible for Malawi to get power to maybe 10 million people within the shortest period possible so that the rural people can have enough power for industrial purposes than just getting power for charging the phones and then lighting the houses. Thank you very much for listening.